Hi everyone. Welcome to practice problem JE01. In this one, we are going to journalize a few transactions. Let's take a look. All right, I give you transactions A through D. A couple of these are a little tricky at the beginner stage. So pause the video, see if you can come up with the journal entries for these. When you're ready, come on back and I'll walk through the solution. I will just say right up front, um, notice that these are undated. Journal entries typically contain a date, but since there's no date on these, don't worry about dates. Just try to get accounts and debits and credits aligned. I'll see you in a minute. All right, welcome back. So here we go. Journalize the following economic transactions, and we are going to kick it off with A. Tiger Inc. performs $35,000 worth of services for a customer who agrees to pay later. So you have done a job and it's worth $35,000. When you do a job, what that is called is earning the revenue. And so what we're going to record here is some service revenue. And in this case, service revenue is going up. And when revenues go up, that's a credit. So in this journal entry, I'm going to put it right here, service revenue, $35,000. And, and you can't tell that it's indented right now, but I'm going to start my debit here and I'm going to put my debit number there. So this is indented for um, the credit uh, being represented as not, not left aligned. But I need a match, right? I need a $35,000 debit that goes with it. And so I have to ask myself, well, what is that debit going to be? So what happened in here? Well, I know I earned the money. But here's the other piece of it. The customer is agreeing to pay later. In other words, the customer owes me or I'm going to receive the money from the customer later. We call this accounts receivable, often abbreviated A slash R. And again, I would put dates on these had I given um, dates in the problem, but I didn't give any dates, so don't worry about it. So here you go, debit A, R, credit service revenue. That is how we record earning money, but the customer is agreeing to pay us later. All right, let's move on to B. Flyer LLC pays 10,000 cash for supplies it uses in its operations. All right, so in this case, we are spending cash. So that's gonna be an asset down. However, we are getting in exchange for that supplies, asset up. So here we just have an exchange of assets, one going up, one going down. Asset going up is the debit. So supplies is the debit, 10,000. Asset going down is the credit, cash credited, 10,000. And there is our journal entry representing cash out supplies in. Next up, Blue Devil Corps writes a note to purchase a $400,000 building. So we are buying a building, that's an asset going up. Now, when assets go up, that's our debit. So we already have the debit side of this, building 400,000. We need the credit. And it says that we didn't pay for this building. We wrote a note. What that means is we now have a note payable later, and that is a liability, note payable. And we can abbreviate that NP for note payable. And liabilities, when they go up, that's a credit. And so there's our journal entry for that transaction. And then finally, this last one. This last one's another tough one, like A was. Um, Flyer Corps accumulates 2,000 in interest that it will pay later. Now, we just dealt with paying later here, note payable. We know that paying later involves a payable, and we know that that's a liability, and therefore that's the credit side of the transaction. So in this case, um, this is interest we're gonna pay. So I'm gonna call this interest payable. And this is my credit in this transaction because that's my liability that I'm going to owe later, my payable. I'm going to move this down, give me a little bit of space there. But I need a debit that goes with it, something $2,000. And here's where the real trickiness comes in, right? Because it says I accumulated this interest that I'll pay later. Well, what does it mean to accumulate interest? Well, that really just depends on whether or not you're the one making the interest or you're the one having to pay the interest. If you're the one making the interest, that's basically revenue. You're earning money. But if you're the one having to pay it, which is the situation in this case, that's a cost to you. You owe someone something that you didn't owe previously. 
so you have a cost incurred. And the word we use for cost incurred is expense. In this case, we'll name it interest expense. Now that one was tough. Number one was tough. Number number four, I say number one, A and D. Those were the tough ones. B and C were, were a little bit easier. Um, but there you have it. Just some examples of putting together journal entries from a given piece of economic information. Hope you found this problem helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.